So it's finally time for my very first Q&A. What if I spit on your tune, I'll boss it. What's going on guys, Camry Fitness here and first of all if you're new to the channel make sure you hit that subscribe button and leave this video with a like, it really does help out massively. So I'm very excited because the other day I hosted uh, a little Q&A question on Instagram and I got quite a lot of responses so I'm going to include the most popular questions from the Q&A and I'm so excited because this is my very first one so let's get into it. So first question, where are your calves? <laughs> Anyway, second question. Did you swap calf day for for, for bicep? For bicep day? So, third question. When are you going to train your calf? You just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. Right, enough of the calf questions now. So, the first serious question is, what made you become a personal trainer? So, I've always really enjoyed kind of like training myself. Um, and I just thought, you know what, going through uni and everything, I've learned quite a bit about different training methods and I thought that it'd be really beneficial if I applied that to other people. And I also like the whole um, aspect of running your own business. Um, I never kind of pictured myself working for someone and even though I kind of operate at Pure Gym, um, it's still running my own business. So next question, what was the hardest thing when first becoming a personal trainer? Um, I'd probably say the hardest thing was the first couple of days um, because I literally came into the gym and didn't know kind of what to do about anything so I was literally just stood in the corner um, I didn't know how to approach people no one in the gym properly knew me obviously they'd seen me kind of like training and stuff but they'd never known me as a personal trainer so the first couple of shifts were really felt really awkward um, and like I say, uh, as soon as I got kind of like the first couple of classes and stuff over and done with and I started kind of like um, meeting a lot of new people and especially now with the classes a lot of kind of regulars who come to the classes um, started to feel a lot more comfortable doing everything. So next question, what is your opinion on meal replacement shakes? <clears throat> so I was going to do a separate video on this because uh, we had an incident the other day. Um, I absolutely detest meal replacement shakes. I always try to keep it very real with people in terms of when I'm speaking to clients, when I'm speaking to people in the gym. Um, and I just absolutely hate the idea of meal replacement shakes. First of all, um, you should always try to get all your meals from actual food. Um, but the meal replacement shakes and the meal replacement kind of industry is just charging people to, to basically be in a calorie deficit. Um, as well as the amount of sugar in the shakes which massively spikes your insulin but the biggest kind of factor in it is it's not sustainable like you're not going to be with a meal replacement company for kind of the rest of your life are you and a lot of people find as soon as they come off these meal replacement shakes they haven't uh, adapted their diet so they're kind of um, as soon as they stop the shakes they pile the weight on and I'm a massive kind of like advocate for mental health and uh, for someone going from being in this really good condition being on the shakes although it's not healthy, you might still uh, lose weight in quite a short period of time. Um, for their mental health to suddenly pile on a load of weight again, it's just not, I just don't think it's healthy. So just remember, this is all my personal opinion. Um, I'm not gonna name any companies, but I'll always recommend to my clients so that they kind of get all the calories and all the macros through whole foods and healthier foods than actually go with meal replacements. Next question, how do I increase the efficiency of my muscle growth? So, um, I think there's quite a lot of factors. Your main one is kind of your progressive overload, so tracking what weights you're using and try to push yourself a little bit further each session, whether that's increasing the weight, whether that's increasing the rep. But a big one is focusing on the stretch factor. A lot of people uh, try to lift as heavy as they can, they're not using proper form, and the main thing to focus on is getting that stretch because that, that's what creates kind of like the tearing in your muscle fibers. Um, which contributes to your muscle hypertrophy. So I just think you need to learn the proper technique first, even if that means starting a uh, decreased weight load, so you can actually build it up properly with the correct technique instead of just half repping. On top of that as well, you've got to consume the right amount of protein, uh, can't have too many carbs if you're trying to, to do it without gaining too much fat. Um, there's loads of different factors contributing to kind of like the diet side of muscle growth but I think the main thing comes down to technique in the gym. So, in your opinion, what's the most efficient method of fat loss? So, I like a combination of weight training because overall it speeds up your metabolism so you're burning calories at a quicker pace. Um, and I also, I really like HIIT training. I don't like CrossFit because I think the chance of injury is like massive, especially when you're lifting heavy weights. But say HIIT training on a rowing machine or a bike, 
um, where in the intense periods you increase the resistance. The main thing to remember is kind of just ensure you're working at maximal intensity through those kind of like short bursts in your HIIT training. But most of all, I think it's just consistency, getting yourself to the gym kind of like three times a week and gradually increasing that metabolism because uh, that's the most important factor for your fat loss. Just consistency and increasing your activity expenditure over the week because the results are going to come. It's just being patient with it because it's not a fast process. Do you prefer training clients for fat loss or muscle gain? Um, this is a tough one because training clients with muscle gain is a very, very slow process, whereas with fat loss, um, especially with kind of like my training methods, I can see improvements in my clients like kind of after two weeks. And obviously I get to see the client really happy that they've lost kind of so much weight in such a short period of time. Um, but with kind of muscle growth with clients, um, it's a much longer process. But in terms of my own knowledge and my training methods, I think that I'm much more kind of like advanced in the muscle growth, but not a lot of people realize that it does actually take time uh, to increase your muscle mass. So in terms of kind of like the short term, I definitely say that I enjoy training fat loss clients a lot more. But um, long term, looking at body composition changes, um, I much kind of prefer the muscle growth. So do you track calories or macros for yourself or your clients? Um, this is one that I've kind of like adapted recently um, because as soon as I became a personal trainer, I wanted everything to be really specific in terms of like um, macros for my clients because of all this kind of like research I've done. But then I kind of, I, I realized that not everyone can do that because everyone's got a life away from the gym. Not everyone trains kind of like as much as me. So I'm at the stage now where I don't really track my macros, not unless I'm potentially like prepping for a comp or, or anything. Cause I can look at a bit of food and know how much protein, how much carb, how much fat. Um, so get a rough estimate and I think for me it takes too much time but like I said uh, hopefully I'm going to be prepping for a competition next summer so I will get a lot more specific with my macros but in terms of with my clients I always give them the option so you've got kind of like three stages so your first stage is keto uh, where you completely remove the carbs you have like 20 gram uh, carbs a day which is ridiculous but in terms of your fat loss it is massive uh, so I'll always give them the option of that number two is um, you can track your macros for the week and I'll tell you uh, where you can improve. And the third one is just to be a little bit healthier with your food. So um, I'll give recommendations of kind of like smaller portions of um, foods to eat, foods to kind of stay away from. But I really like it being more sustainable for when the client leaves me after. So they don't have to kind of completely limit their favorite foods because as soon as they stop training with a personal trainer, they're gonna go straight back to those foods. Oh, this is a big one. I think it's quite big throughout the whole of the fitness industry. So would you be tempted to start a steroid cycle? I think I'd be lying if I told you that I hadn't like researched it and hadn't debated it. But I think that's the same for anyone who's been training kind of like as long as I have. Uh, the train as many times a week because we've seen kind of like the progress that you can make when your diet and when your training is on point anyway but everyone's heard about these kind of like superhuman gains that you can make and everyone obviously wants to be in the best condition but in terms of my business I just think it completely removes all like legitimacy and I completely respect athletes who take steroids because you still have to train your diet still has to be on point you can't just sit on my couch and you're gonna get super ripped um, but I just think it removes the, the legitimate aspect of kind of like anyone being able to get in decent condition. What's your favourite sport outside the gym? Um, so up until this point it was Jiu Jitsu, absolutely loved it, but because of my shoulder, because it keeps popping out for some reason, it just won't stay in its socket, um, I've had to give it a rest for a, at least a good six months just because it affects my business massively and it obviously affects my own training so I can't really risk it which is frustrating because I love watching it absolutely love doing it but I've kind of had to knock it on the head a little bit and then final question do you clap when the plane lands no no I don't so guys that is the end of my very first Q&A once again if you're new to the channel make sure you hit that subscribe button and make sure you leave this video with a like and I will see you next time